Hello everyone, welcome to Sit Less Move More. I'm Molly and today we're going to be concentrating on cardio, getting the blood pumping around the body and core work. What you're going to need for today's session is two pairs of rolled up socks, a tea towel and a glass of water. So if you want to go and get them, you need two pairs of socks and a tea towel. Right, I cannot talk, read and breathe at the same time. So in my ear is the, lov is the lovely Gemma Turner. So her full-time job, she's a classical singer and her part-time job is babysitting me. So she takes care of me when we do our Molly Fit sessions. So she's in my ear. So if you have any questions you'd like to ask, type them in. Gemma will relay them into my ear and then we'll try and get through as many as possible. Right, first of all, when you exercise, what we're doing today, I wanted to, you know, on Wednesday, the government said, right, everyone can go out and exercise as much as possible. That's great if you're physically able to go out and exercise as much as possible. So I've done these sessions for those of us that are less mobile, and I want to show that just because you're in a chair and just because you have limited mobility, doesn't mean that you can't get your blood pumping and your heart rate up. So that's what we're going to do today. That's where the glass of water comes in. It's so important during exercise you take regular sips of water because dehydration can be quite a serious thing. If you're dehydrated, it can cause confusion, it can cause dizziness, it can make you more prone to trips and falling. So it's always important to carry on drinking as we train. So we will stop and have regular sips of water. Also, when we're exercising, we're probably going to get your heart rate a little bit higher than it's used to. Now, work at your own level. If you feel chest pain at all, any time when you're exercising, stop. And if you feel that you're working too hard, just slow it down and work at your own level. You can, sometimes I'll be going quite quickly, so it's up to you. If you want to keep up and you feel it's fine, suitable, great. But at the same time, if you think you're working too hard, just slow it down or even stop and just take some time to recover and get some nice, big, deep breaths in. Right, so what we're going to do today, first of all, is we're going to start with the core. It's quite important to have an activated core whilst you're exercising. Fundamentally, it protects your back and also a strong core will give you good posture so when you're out walking, moving around, it makes you less prone to falling. So let's, what is the core? So the easiest way to find the core is to start with the pelvic floors. So what we're going to do here is we're going to squeeze our internal muscles like we're holding in going to the toilet. You don't want to hold them for too long. You're just going to tighten them and relax and so on. And we're going to do that 10 times. So first of all, let's make sure you're sitting in the right position. You want to be in a chair where your bottom is the same height or a bit higher than your knees. You don't want your knees low, higher than your bottom. Hang on, you don't want your bottom lower than your knees because then it tips your pelvis and puts pressure in the back. Heels want to be directly underneath the knees, feet hip distance apart. That puts everything in what I call a neutral position. Open the chest, so don't force your shoulders back, just be aware that the chest is open. And now we're going to try and work these pelvic floors. So pull in your internals, give them a squeeze and relax, squeeze and relax. Three four, relax, five, relax, six, relax, seven, relax, eight, relax, nine, relax, ten, relax. Good. So the reason I've started with that is your core is probably the hardest thing about exercise to achieve. They're not obvious big superficial muscles. They're the muscles behind the muscles. They're tucked and hidden away. And it's not obvious when you switch them on and off. So by activating the pelvic floors, you should have felt a little bit of a stirring and then going on there, pull it in and zip it up to your belly button and just be aware that something's activated. But whilst you're doing that, remember to breathe. It's very, very common when we're whacking on the core muscles, we forget to breathe. So just activate those muscles and breathe. Let's just have a few deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. Good. Right. Keeping that chest open, let's start with the socks. So a sock in each hand. 
We're going to put our hands by our side. We're going to sit up as straight as we can with an open chest. And we're going to squeeze the socks and relax. Squeeze and relax. So we're just starting to gently warm up, working our hand muscles. Let's do five more. One, two, three, four, five. Good. Now we're going to convert that into bicep curls. And we're going to start with a hammer curl, which is called a hammer curl because you imagine you hold a hammer. You're holding it that way. Now, hands by your side, pin the elbows into your ribs, into the side of your body, come up to 90 degrees, and as you reach your chest height, squeeze the socks, and then as you go back down, relax the socks. So, up and squeeze. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. Good. Right, let's just have a little break to make sure we're doing it all. You should not feel this in your back at all, okay? We don't want any unnecessary body weight or pressure going into our backs. It should be in here. So if you are feeling it in your back, try and change your body position, activate the core a bit more, maybe open your chest. Let's try again. So remember, start from straight. As you come up to 90 degrees, squeeze the socks. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's hold it there. Let's keep squeezing the socks for five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Good. Now we're going to reverse that and we're going to do a bicep curl. So this one, turn your hands round so your knuckles are facing the floor. Start with your hands by your side like last time. Again, come up to chest height, squeeze the sock, and back down again. The reason we come up to chest height and not any further is if I turn side on, watch, when, watch my shoulder when I come up. See, it rocks forward. So it goes from being a bicep exercise into a shoulder exercise. It's that little movement, takes it out of the bicep and puts it in the shoulder. So you come up to here, and that isolates the bicep. Now, you can make this exercise as easy or as difficult as you want just by the amount of force you put into your bicep as you exercise. So the more you squeeze it, the harder your work. So open chest. Let's go. Squeeze. One, two. So you're squeezing the sock and your bicep when you get up to the top. Four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, and rest. Just have a little rest. Whilst we're resting, if you want to tap in any questions, I'm happy to answer them. So we we'll start again. Feet hip distance apart, heels under knees, open chest. Let's do another set. Squeeze the biceps, squeeze the sock. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good. So that's a nice, slow, gentle start. Now let's try and put a bit more coordination, a bit of cardio into it. So what we're going to do, we're going to alternate the arms. You're going to come across the body to your shoulder, back down. And then the other hand, across the body to the shoulder and back down. As you come up and hit your shoulder, squeeze the sock. And we're going to speed this up to get the blood pump in. So let's go in five, four, three, two, one. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's do two on each side. One, squeeze, squeeze, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Back to singles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Second set for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and rest. Well done. So now to make that a bit harder, what we're going to do now, instead of our hands being down by our sides, we're going to raise the arms. We're raising the arms, so it's working us harder. 
because we're having to lift the weight of our arms. So take the socks to your chest. Now keep squeezing the socks throughout this. Now if you notice I'm holding them with my thumbs facing up, what we're going to do is we're going to push the arm out, rotate the hand so you can stare over your knuckles, and then bring it back into the chest. Alternate, then go on to the other side, twist and turn so you can stare over your knuckles, and then bring it back to your chest. Forwards and back, forwards and back. Good. Right, so we're going to do this for 30 seconds. Let's go. Nice deep breaths, breathing as we go. Rotating the hands, continually squeezing the socks. Right, if that's too easy, we've done 10 seconds, let's speed it up. One, two, remember, work to your own level. Nice big deep breaths throughout, in through the nose, out through the mouth. If that's too easy, we've got 10 seconds left, speed it up. Good. Five, four, three, two, one. Right, rest, take a big deep breath in. In through the nose and exhale. And let's do this again. Another 30 seconds. Let's go. One. Good. Push. Push. Remember when you're doing this, try and feel that your core is activated. Your spine's neutral. You don't want to feel this in the back at all. It's all in the arms, shoulders, and stomach we want this. Good. 15 seconds left. 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Good. Right, let's take a sip of water whilst we're resting. Now, to make that even harder, obviously, the higher you lift your arms, the more effort you've got to put in. So now we're going to lift them to the ceiling. So, again, hands to chest, squeeze the socks. You want your knuckles facing away with you, palms of your hands facing you. And what we're going to do here is we're going to lift and rotate so as you raise the arm rotate so the knuckles are facing you and as you bring them down rotate so the knuckles are facing away from you so let's alternate up 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 good and again we're going to do this for 30 seconds nice deep breaths good if this pace is okay for you stick to it if you're finding it a bit too easy speed it up good 30 second burst that's it Nice deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. Good. 20 more seconds to go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good. Right, that's enough with the socks for now. Now let's get the legs involved. Obviously the legs are bigger, heavier, more muscles involved. So the bigger the muscle, the more oxygen they need. So the more blood flow happens, so you work harder. Right, straighten up, open your chest, activate your core. Make sure you've got a neutral spine with no body weight going in. And what we're going to do is we're just going to lift the leg up and down. Take the foot a few inches off the floor. But when you do that, try not to lean in your back. So if you look at me side on, I'm lifting up and down and my spine isn't moving. What you don't want is this as you lift. Okay, try and keep your torso still and that way the action is controlled by your core. You can put your hands on the side of the chair for support if it helps. And let's go up and down, up and down. Good. We're just going to do this for 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, two, one. Right, let's just do one leg at a time for ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right, hold it there. Hold for ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Swap sides up and down. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. Remember, keep that back straight, the core on. Let's hold it up there. Hold for ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So that's introduced the legs. Now let's marry up the arms and the legs, get some coordination working. So we're going to start by swinging the arms. And what we're going to do here, I want you to keep your elbows at 90 degrees. So when you go back, don't lengthen the arm out. Keep it at 90 degrees. 
So you're swinging off the shoulder. So the angle of the elbow stays the same. It's the shoulder that's moving. So we're just going to practice that swinging. You know you're doing this right if your hips start moving from side to side because this creates hip swing, which is why it's always a good idea to swing your arms as you walk because it makes walking a bit more economical. It encourages the hips to move forward. So let's go. Let's speed this up. So I want you to really whack on the core, take big deep breaths and swing those arms as fast as you can. From now, let's do 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Let's take some deep breaths. Three big breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. Good. And then afterwards, have a little sip of water. And we're going to do those arm swings again. So we'll start gently to warm up. We're just going to ease into this. Ten seconds to start. Remember, you want this important to get the arms as far back as you do as far forward. So let's go. Ten seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good. Now keep those arms swinging. And now let's march on the spot. So I'd like you to try and coordinate this as your left leg goes up, your right arm goes forward. So let's try that. And remember, don't let your back arch. Try and keep your back as upright as you can in that neutral position and use your core muscles. And if you're doing this correctly, you should really feel this in the stomach now. So let's speed it up. 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, two, one, slow it down, keep going. It's important when you're exercising at a higher level and you've got your heart rate up, you never want to stop suddenly. Always slow it down, cool down first. If you stop suddenly, the blood stays where it is, not enough gets to the brain and you can feel a bit dizzy. Right, let's start speeding it up again. 10 seconds, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one, slow it down. Uh, good, nice deep breaths. Three deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. We're going to have one more go at getting that heart rate up. So go as fast as you can. Obviously, as fast as is appropriate to your fitness. Right, let's go. Ten seconds, go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one, and rest. Good. Right, lose the arms. Let's just keep the legs going. Gently marching the legs whilst we're recovering. Nice deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. Three of those. One more. Good, and rest. Right, so you want your tea towel now. So what we're going to do now is we're going to strengthen the upper back muscles. So grab your tea towel, fold it in half, and then half again. Hold on like a bar. Pull in, squeezing your shoulder blades together. So it looks like this. The elbows are going as far back as they can. And when you get to there, squeeze those shoulder blades together. So we're really working these muscles. Let's do 10 of those. So first of all, is your seat position okay? Feet hip distance apart, heels under knees. Activate the core, neutral spine, open chest, and let's row. Let's squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. Hold it there. Squeeze your shoulder blades together for ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And again, let's row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, 
10, squeeze, 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 hold it there for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and squeeze, just 5 this time, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Right, and you should have got a bit of a burn in the upper muscles of the back there where you were really using them and con concentrating your efforts into them. Right, now we're going to see what sort of condition your chest and shoulders are in. Now, I want you to take the tea towel and hold it at the end. Now, when we do this exercise, try not to let the tea towel bend, so pull it firmly enough that keeps it straight, but not too firm. And what we're going to do here is bring the tea towel behind our neck. If you can't do this, it's probably because your chest is too tight. So if you can't bring it behind the head without cheating and bending the neck forward, just put it to the top of your head. But don't overforce this one and don't try too hard. So the arms go up, we pull on the tea towel, we keep our chest open, our core on, back straight, and we pull down behind the neck without looking down or bending. Don't compromise your body position. If you can't come down behind the neck, just pull to the top of the head. Let's do 10 of these. And this is a lovely exercise because what it does, it loosens the chest and it strengthens the upper muscles of the back and the shoulders, which helps with posture and standing up straight. Right, let's do four more. One, two, three, four. Good. Now, don't be surprised if that hurts. We're often tight here without realising, and even tighter here. So by asking you to do that, you're really pulling against quite big muscles that are happy in their position, and we don't want them there. So let's try that again. You should feel that the second set is easier than the first set. So make sure your body's in the right position. Hold the towel, keep it taut, arms up, and let's go. One, two. Remember, don't cheat. Keep your eyes forward, chin square to the floor. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good. Right, we're finished with that. You can get rid of your tea towel. Now we're going to go into the cactus. And again, this is a nice way of strengthening the upper muscles of the back and loosening the chest. Arms up 90 degrees, elbows same height as shoulders. Try and get the hands so they're directly over the elbows. From there, without forcing back, squeeze your shoulder blades together. So minimal movement in the shoulders. You want to feel your shoulders in the middle of your back squeezing together. Shoulder blades, rather. And let's hold for another five, four, three, two, one. Relax. Shake it off. Let's go back in and do that again. Arms up. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. And let's hold that for ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one. Good. So we're going to stop there. It's probably been a quite demanding on your core. Have a sip of water and then we're going to do some stretching just to loosen off the muscles that we've worked. It's so important after a workout you stretch the muscles. So when muscle fibers contract, the fibers slide together like so. The more you work them, what happens is they get shorter and they stick together. As they get shorter and stick together, they get tighter. If muscles are tight, it restricts movement. So instead of a nice, easy movement, a nice movement that flows, you have to force and push through the movement, which makes the muscles more liable to injury and tear. So we stretch after to realign those muscle fibers. And what we're going to do, we're going to start with the neck. So feet hip distance apart. Activate your core, open chest, and then turn the head to the side. Look over your shoulder. Oh, hello. I think we're going to be invaded. Bentley, what are you doing in here? Sorry, the door just swung open. What are you doing? He's after my socks. The dog loves my socks. Right, go on. How you going? Go on. <laughs> so, where was I? Open chest, look over your shoulder. Hold it there for 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 
back to center, over to the other side. Hold it there for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Important with this and all stretches, ease into them. Don't force them. It's very easy to pull a muscle and make a muscle spasm. So you just want to ease in so you feel a stretch but not pain. Now let's stretch our shoulders off. Arm in front, bring it across the body. Keep your hand the same height as your shoulder and just gently push. If you're struggling to do that, it might be because when your arm's out straight, obviously the muscles and the tendons are at full pelt. So you might have to bend the elbow a bit just to give you a little bit more wiggle room. Hold it there for five, four, three, two, one. Good. Other side. Also, when you do this, try not to let your torso move with the stretch. Keep everything else facing forward. Nice deep breaths. And hold for ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good. Right. Stretch the chest, hands on hips, get your fingers and thumbs facing the same way and just gently pull the elbows together. So try and get your elbows to disappear behind your torso. Stick the chest out and try not to arch the back. So this is where we need to think about is our core activated, is our spine neutral. And just hold it there for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, good. Now we're going to stretch our glutes. You want to sit back in the chair for this one. Use the back of the chair for support. Put the ankle on the knee. Right, so I've got my right angle on my left knee. I'm going to use my left hand to support my ankle to stabilize my leg. My right hand is going to go on the outside of my knee and I'm going to pull my knee to my opposite shoulder. So my right knee is going to my left shoulder. And you should feel this here in the big glute muscle in your bottom. It's quite important, this one. Glutes are responsible for, in my field, about 9 out of 10 back pain. So tight glutes can actually give you referred pain in the small of your back. They're a big, massive, powerful muscle. And the trouble is when a big, massive, powerful muscle goes tight, it causes big problems. And it's quite easy to stretch it and deal with these problems. Good. Let's try the other side. Ankle on the knee. Hand to support. On the opposite side, pull in. Let's hold it there. Hold for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good. Right, we're going to finish off with one more exercise. And this exercise we're not going to do in the chair. We're going to do it standing up. And it's to stretch your calf muscle, the muscle down here behind the leg. It's important to stretch the calf muscle because pretty much everyone's calf muscles are tight. And the problem is when calf muscles are tight, they are really strong and powerful. I mean, they, if you think when you, I mean, they're designed for when we run, they can take two and a half times your body weight going in. And the trouble is when they tighten up, it limits ankle movement, it limits foot flexion, and it can make your walking wooden. And also, if you're not picking your foot up when you walk, you're more likely to hit one of those loose paving slabs or tree roots or whatever and fall. So by keeping the, the calves loose, you're really helping the way you walk and it makes it less wooden. You need to use a supportive, well, I always use a wall because it's not going anywhere. And you stand up. Right, place your, oh, let's see. I don't think you're going to get all of me in this shot. I'm a bit too tall. So I only really care about my legs, my feet. I want you to see my feet if I go here. Now, put your hands on the wall. Your body wants to be arm distance. So if I come down on my knees for this, just to show you. Your body wants to be arm distance away. Okay, you don't want to be too far back because you don't want to lean into this stretch. Okay, so imagine I'm standing on my feet here. My torso straight, I'm arm distance away from the wall. So, arm distance away from the wall, hands just lower than shoulder height. Then, use one foot at a time, step back, let's move that out of the way. Step back as far as you can, making sure that your back foot, all of it can hit the floor. Okay, you want all of the sole on the floor. Now, with that back foot, glue the heel down onto the floor. 
Now with the front leg, lean forward on the front leg. This stretch comes from lean, how much lean you put in the front. So the important thing with this stretch, your back heel is glued to the floor and you lean off the front leg. And if you're doing this properly, you'll get a strong pull in the calf muscle. It's a big, powerful muscle. It's always tight and you'll know about it. But again, I don't mind causing you mild discomfort, but I certainly don't want to cause you pain. So if it's hurting, stop. Right, let's swap sides. So just to remind you, arm distance away from the wall. Take a nice deep step back, but make sure you can still plant your foot on the floor. The other thing I should have said is make sure your feet are facing the same way. So have a look, make sure they're all lined up, facing in the right direction. Toes aren't spraying out to the side. Lean off the front leg, glue your back heel down to the floor, and let's hold that for another 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Right, so that's my lot for today. I hope it's been of some benefit. I will be here same time next place, 5 o'clock on Thursday. Until then, stay well, stay safe. See you then.